Greetings, everybody. This is Chaplain Bob. Listen, in the King James Bible, the word giants comes from the Hebrew word niflim, and um, it, uh, they translate it as giants, you know, like Goliath. So keep that in mind. Uh, some of your scholars of Hebrew will use the word niflim. Um, I don't think giants is a mistranslation. Absolutely not. But uh, that's the root word of where it comes from. All right. So please continue to listen to the rest of the, the uh, study. Thank you. Hello, everybody. This is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries. Uh, this Bible study, I'm giving, I guess you could say I'm dedicating it to uh, Rob Lee. He uh, opened my eyes to a uh, few things. Uh, I knew about the demons walking in the flesh, but uh, the uh, serpent eyes thing, that's something that was new to me. But we are going to take a look at the uh, briefly the sons of Ham, specifically the Canaanites, the Philistines, and what is translated as giants. And there were a group of the Canaanites, one of the uh, groups of the Canaanites, they were giants, and they had six fingers and six toes. Now, what's interesting is six is the number of man, you know, uh, the mark of the beast is going to be, you know, six, six, six. Man was created. Adam, man, was created on the sixth day. That's why it is his number. And I don't want to make this a huge, long study. Uh, but if, you're, if you do not understand the angels that sinned thing, may I suggest you click on my name, on my YouTube channel and from there it'll take you to the home page and then it, it'll say above that it'll say playlists click on that look up the angels that sinned I did at least 10 hours worth of study on what really happened in Genesis 6 I've known what happened in Genesis 6 since uh, 1990 and uh, you know, they walk among us. They look like us in a lot of ways, but Jesus said, by their fruits ye shall know them. So let's take a look in Genesis 10, in verse 1. It says, Now these are the generations of the sons of Noah. Shem, and Shem was uh, the chosen seed, that's where the line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob came from, going all the way through Christ. And then you had, uh, it says Shem, Ham, and remember something, Ham is not kosher. Ham and Japheth, and unto them were sons born after the flood. Now, Japheth was not a bad seed. It wasn't the chosen seed like Shem, but they could be accepted into the fa um, the, the uh, family of God after a period of time. But that's not what this is all about. And I'm going to kind of skip around because, like I say, I don't want to make this a huge study. And it could be. It could be hours and hours and hours. And just remember something. Not all the Canaanites were giants. The Philistines were definitely giants, but not all the Canaanites were giants. Now, in Genesis 10, 6, it says, And the sons of Ham, Cush, and Mizram, and Put, and Canaan. Now, the sons of Ham... Canaan, uh, their children uh, gathered 
and settled into the promised land. And then the other children of Ham settled in what is modern-day Egypt and Ethiopia. And a lot of people will say, well, you know, okay, well, the sons of Ham uh, settled in Ethiopia. The Ethiopians are black. Therefore, Ham is black. Uh, I don't think so. It used to be when you went to South Africa. I mean, you go to South Africa, let's say 50 years ago. Were South Africans black or were they white? Well, the government was white. Uh, you know, just because what's there now doesn't mean anything. I mean, you could take a white person marrying somebody black and the children come out black. Does that mean that they were always black? No. And another thing, too, is the blacks that settled in Ethiopia today could have killed off the children of Ham or intermarried with them. I don't know. I wasn't there. I haven't lived that long. What happened in the past, I don't know. But, you know, Adam, Adam, in the Hebrew, is a racial description. It says, to be able to show blood in the face, to be able to blush, ruddy. And ruddy means uh, light complexion with freckles. I mean, look it up. I'm not making this stuff up. I mean, Adam is a racial description. And if you get the modern Strong's Hebrew concordance, they've changed that. And it doesn't say that anymore. It just says, oh, Adam, the first man. Uh, <laughs> you know, but I had an 18, 1980s uh, Strong's and the modern ones, the brand new ones are have a different definition. So the publishers have been bought up and they're changing things. Now, if you're interested in some of the things that I'm pointing out, I just go ahead and do some research on your own. But uh, in Genesis 10, we read, oh, let's see. Oh, okay, let me point out something real quick. In Genesis 10 and verse 5, they take the same word and translate it two different ways. They take the word goyim and one place in the same sentence translated as Gentiles. Then they take the same word and then they translate it nations. Genesis 10, 5. By these were the isles of the Gentiles... Goyim, divided in their lands, everyone after his tongue, after their families, in their Goyim nations. This is why a lot of people get confused. They think Gentile means non-Jew. No, it doesn't. It can mean non-Israelite, but it just means nation or nations. They took the same word and translated it two different ways. I'm not saying that's an error. I'm just saying that, pointing out that they were not consistent. Verse 6. And the sons of Ham, Cush, Miz and Mizraim, and Put, and Canaan. And the sons of Cush, Seba, Havilah, Sabta, and Ramah, and Sabticha. Um, and the sons of Ramah, Sheba, and Dedan. And Cush began Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one in the earth. Now, a lot of people will say that according to legends, Nimrod was the founder of a lot of the mystery religions. Matter of fact, uh, well, look up Nimrod. I don't want to get into it. But uh, Nimrod was, he, he's, he's the kind of guy I probably would not have associated with in my Christian walk. I probably had hung out with him when I was in high school, but uh, so, okay. And Cush began Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one in the earth. He was a mighty hunter 
before the Lord. Uh, some say a hunter of men's souls. Wherefore it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord, and the beginning of his kingdom was Babel. Ah, Babel was the beginning of his kingdom, huh? Babel means confusion. Uh, the beginning of his kingdom was Babel and Erech and Akkad and Kalna in the land of Shinar. Out of that land went forth Absher and built it Nineveh. And Nineveh was to become the capital of the Assyrian Empire. You can read about them in the book of Jonah uh, and the city Rehoboth and Kela and Resim between Nineveh and Kela, the same as a great city. And Mizram begat Ludum and Ananim and I'm probably slaughtering these names and Lehabim and Naphtulhim and Parthrusim and Kasluhim out of whom came Philistim. Now the Philistim is probably singular. The Philistines was probably plural, and they were the they were the Tront giants, out of whom came Philistim and Kaphtorim, and Canaan, and Canaan was the bad one, really bad. And Canaan begat Sidon his firstborn and Heth. Uh, the Sidonians were tied in with the Phoenicians. Uh, you read about Sidon and Tyre in Scripture. Usually nothing good. And Heth. Matter of fact, it was, uh, I think it was the wife of Isaac. Or maybe it was the wife of Jacob that complained uh, about, I think it was, I think it was uh, Esau's mother complained about Jacob. What good would her life be if uh, Jacob married the daughter of Heth, one of the daughters of Heth? Bad seed line, people. So, and Canaan begat Sidon, his firstborn, and Heth. We'll go back to that. And the Jebusite, and the Amorite, and the Gergesite, and the Hivite, and the Archite, and the Sinite, S-I-N-I-T-E. How would you like to be of the tribe of the Sinite? No, thank you. And the Arvidite, and the Zemurite, and the Hamathite, and afterward were the families of the Canaanites spread abroad. And the border of the Canaanites was from Sidon, as thou comest to Gerar unto Gaza, as thou goest unto Sodom and Gomorrah, ah, Canaanites were around Sodom and Gomorrah, and Adma and Zeboim, even unto Lasha. These are the sons of Ham, after their families, after their tongues, in their countries and in their nations. Okay, uh, daughter of Heth. Genesis 27, verse 46. It was Rebekah and Isaac, right? And Rebekah said to Isaac, I am weary of my life because of the daughters of Heth. If Jacob take a wife of the daughters of Heth, such as these which are of the daughters of the land, what good shall my life do me? You see, who you married was very, very important in the Old Testament. Doesn't matter the, to the preachers today. You know, and think about this. You know, people will spend hundreds, if not thousands of dollars on purebred dogs, AKC registered, right? People will spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on cattle, purebred cattle. And there's people that will spend a million or more on purebred, thoroughbred horses. 
and yet they could care less who or what their children marry today. Think about that. Now, here's an interesting verse, Genesis 14 and verse 5. And in the 14th year came Chedorlaomer, I don't know, and the kings that were with him and smote the Rephims. Now, if you look at the uh, Hebrew, the Rephims have reference to the giants. It's just another name for them. I don't know if it's like a, a special family or what. Uh, and smote the Rephims in Ashtaroth. Ashtaroth was a satanic, I think it was a goddess, but I'm not sure. I just know it could be a satanic god. And smote the Rephims in Ashtaroth, Carnium and the Zum Zuzims in Ham. There's that ham again. Remember, ham's not kosher. And the imams in Shave Kiraithium, and the Horites in their Mount Seir. Now, Mount Seir was the eventual home of Esau Edom. That was another group of people that uh, God was not real happy with, the brother of Jacob Israel. And the Horites in their Mount Seir unto El Param, which is by the wilderness. All right, so. All right, uh, in Psalms chapter 105, verse 21. He made him lord of his house and ruler of all his substance to bind his princes at his pleasure and teach his senators wisdom. Israel also came into Egypt. And Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. Remember, Ham's not kosher. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. So this is parallelism. Israel also came into Egypt, and Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. And he increased his people greatly and made them stronger than their enemies. God doesn't say, if there's if God says anything good about Egypt in the Bible, I don't know where it's at. If somebody can show me, I'd be very interested. But every time I've read the Bible, uh, God does not speak very favorably of Egypt. All right, so let's read 25. He turned their heart to hate his people. God turned the heart of the Egyptians and Pharaoh to hate Israel, his people. He turned their heart to hate his people, to deal subtly with his servants. He sent Moses, his servant, and Aaron, whom he had chosen. See, God makes the choice. Israel didn't choose Moses. God chose Moses. Verse 27, They showed his signs among them and wonders, wonders in the land of Ham. Not kosher, right? He sent darkness and made it dark, and they rebelled not against his word. In Revelation 11, verse 8, speaking of the two witnesses, And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. So Egypt is spiritually likened unto Sodom which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Where was Jesus our Lord crucified? Uh, Jerusalem, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. And I've had people tell me, oh, well, that's talking about Rome. I didn't know Jesus was crucified in Rome. And then they'll, you know, talk, well, you know, the Romans crucified him. Well, that's not what Paul says. Paul says it was the Jews that had Jesus crucified. Even though Roman soldiers might have carried the nails and the hammer. So, 
You know what? Maybe the Romans did uh, crucify Jesus. Let's take a look at Acts chapter 2, verse 36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. So, if Rome crucified Jesus, they're Israel. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. All right, let's take a look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 14. When somebody tells you uh, the Romans killed Jesus. For ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For ye, the Christians, for ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews. The Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets, and have persecuted us, and they please not God, and are contrary to all men forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved to fill up their sins alway, for the wrath has come upon them to the uttermost. Oh, by the way, people, remember, I am on brighteon.com, B-R-I-G-H-T-E-O-N.com. Um, I'm posting new videos to there that I'm not putting on YouTube because I'm hoping... I can stay on YouTube for as long as possible without getting the uh, the uh, kosher thought police removing my channel. Remember that. my The name of my channel is Christian Bible Studies. Look for me, please. All right, let's take a look at Ezekiel chapter 30, verse 3. For the day is near, even the day of the Lord is near a cloudy day it shall be the time of the heathen and the sword shall come upon egypt and great pain shall be in ethiopia when the slain shall fall in egypt and they shall take away her multitude and her foundations shall be broken down ethiopia and Libya, and Lydia, and all the mingled people, mingled people, and Chub, and the men of the land that is in league, shall fall with them by the sword. Thus saith the Lord, they also that uphold Egypt shall fall, and the pride of her power shall come down, and the tower of Syene shall they fall in it by the sword, saith the Lord God. You know, I keep telling everybody there's there's probably more uh, prophecy of the end times in the Old Testament than there is in the New, and most people that claim to be Christian that go to church have absolutely no working knowledge at all of the Old Testament. Of course, their pastors will say, well, you know, uh, the Old Testament, that was for the Jews. And that's just a, a, a bunch of mistakes that God made. And then Jesus comes, and now everything has changed. God just loves everybody. He just wants everybody to be saved. And then they quote John 3, 16. Oh. Turn to Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 1. Gather yourselves together, yea, gather together, O nation, not desired. Nation. Same word that they translate sometimes as Gentile. Before the decree bring forth, before the day pass as the chaff, before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you, before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you. Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment and seek righteousness. Seek righteousness. Seek meekness. It may be ye shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. 
For Gaza shall be forsaken, and Ashkelon a, desola a desolation. They shall drive out Ashdod at the noonday, and Ekron shall be rooted up. All these places are talking about uh, dwellings of the Canaanites. Woe unto the inhabitants of the seacoast, the nation of the Cherethites. The word of the Lord is against you, O Canaan, the land of the Philistines. The Philistines were the giants. O Canaan, the land of the Philistines, I will even destroy thee. I will even destroy thee that there shall be no inhabitant. But, but, but Jesus loves everybody. Yeah, right. Verse 6. And the sea coast shall be dwellings and cottages for shepherds and folds for flock. And the coast shall be for the remnant of the house of Judah. They shall feed thereupon in the houses of Ash Ashkelon, shall they lie down in the evening, for the Lord their God shall visit them and turn away their captivity. I have heard the reproach of Moab and the revilings of the children of Ammon, whereby they have reproached my people and magnified themselves against their border. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, surely Moab shall be as Sodom and the children of Ammon as Gomorrah. What happened to Sodom and Gomorrah? Uh, fire and brimstone, even the breeding of nettles and salt pits in a perpetual desolation. Perpetual. What does that mean? It means forever. It, forever, it's going to, those people are going to be forever desolate. The residue of my people shall spoil them and the remnant of my people shall possess them. They shall have, oh, oh I'm sorry. This shall they have for their pride because they have reproached and magnified themselves against the people of the Lord of hosts. The Lord will be terrible unto them. What? But God loves everybody. The Lord will be terrible unto them, for he will famish all the gods of the earth, and men shall worship him, everyone from his place, even all the isles of the heathen. Ye Ethiopians also shall be slain, by my sword. Doesn't sound like God likes the Ethiopians, does it? Uh, uh, ye Ethiopians also, ye shall be slain by my sword. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, communist South Africans, black South Africans killing all the white farmers. Think about this. And you know what? The Chinese are uh, moving into Africa. They're uh, loaning money, supposedly, building infrastructure. Uh, they're building dams, bridges, roads, rail lines, factories, mines, all kinds of stuff. Africa is mineral rich. All the kind of stuff you need for a strong military. And when they go in there, uh, they're taking it over. You know, they are... Matter of fact, uh, one of the top army officers of in of China in Africa will always refer to the um, the Africans, the black Africans, as monkeys. And um, you know, of course, they were screaming, "Ah, oh, racism, racism!" But the Chinese don't care. I mean, they'll just take an AK-47 and put a couple bullets into your skull. They don't care. I mean, you know, they. They, uh, their opinion of the blacks is they're not even smart enough to do anything but the most, uh, well, about the only thing they can do is handle a pick and a shovel. That's about the only jobs that they will let them do. They will not let them handle the equipment and the machinery. So after all the blacks kill all the white farmers, um, uh, I think God's go, got a, God's got a little surprise for him via the Chinese. Ye Ethiopians also, ye shall be slain by my sword, and he will stretch out his hand against the north and destroy Assyria, and will make Nineveh a desolation and dry like a wilderness. And flocks shall lie down in the midst of her, all the beasts of the nations, 
both the cormorant and the bittern shall lodge in the upper lintels of it. Their voice shall sing in the windows. Desolation shall be in the thresholds, for he shall uncover the cedar work. This is the rejoicing city that dwelt carelessly, that saith in her heart, I am, and there is none beside me. How has she become a desolation, a place for beasts to lie down in? Everyone that passeth by her shall hiss and wag his hand. I don't get the wagging hand thing, but uh, must have been an ancient custom to, for like a curse. I don't know. All right, so let's take a look at the uh, Canaanites. Now, if you want to do some research, I, I'm going to give you some things, and you can look it up on your own. Um, in Genesis 24, verse 37, I believe this is Abraham looking for a wife for his son Isaac. And we read, And my master made me swear, saying, Thou shalt not take a wife to my son of the daughters of the Canaanites, in whose land I dwell. You see, some people think it doesn't matter who your daughters and who your sons marry. Well, I beg to differ. Exodus chapter 3, verse 8. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. How about Exodus 23, 23? For mine angel shall go before thee, and bring thee in unto the Amorites and the Hittites, and the Perizzites and the Canaanites, the Hivites and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. You know what it means, cut them off? Uh, that usually has reference to a sword. I will cut them off. Doesn't sound like um, God likes them too much. How about Numbers 21, verse 3? And the Lord hearkened to the voice of Israel and delivered up the Canaanites, and they utterly destroyed them. But, but, but Jesus loves everybody. Why didn't they just send them evangelists and tell them John 3, 16? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. Oh, please believe in Jesus. God loves you. No. And the Lord hearkened to the voice of Israel and delivered up the Canaanites, and they utterly destroyed them and their cities, and he called the name of the place Hormah. And they utterly destroyed them. They didn't preach to them. Oh, they did. They preached to them with a sword. That's how they preached to them. How about uh, Deuteronomy 20, 17? But thou shalt utterly destroy them. But thou shalt utterly destroy them, namely the Hittites and the Amorites, the Canaanites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee. Wow. You want to know something? Israel and Judah, eventually, they would not uh, do what the Lord commanded of exterminating the Canaanites. Instead, they let them dwell, live among them. And eventually, uh, you know, the men took a look and said, wow, look at that hot-looking Canaanite woman. They took them to wife. How about uh, 1 Chronicles chapter 2 and verse 3? The sons of Judah, Er and Onan and Shelah, which three were born unto him of the daughter of Shua, the Canaanitess, the Canaanitess, and Er, the firstborn of Judah, was evil in the sight of the Lord, and he slew him. Who slew him? God did. God hated them. Now, if you think this is no big deal, 
Read Ezra chapter 9, verse 1. Now, when these things were done, the princes came to me saying, now this is uh, Ezra, if I remember correctly, Ezra was the priest of the Lord after Judah returned to Jerusalem after the Babylonian captivity. You can read about that in the book of Daniel. And I believe Nehemiah was the king, if I remember. Ezra and Nehemiah are contemporary books. Ezra 9, verse 1. Now, when these things were done, the princes came to me, saying, The people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the people of lands, doing according to their abominations. Abominations. That's a sin that God really, 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 really hates. Did I make that clear? God really hates. God hates sin. But an abomination is a sin that God really hates. That's an extra special I hate thing. Doing according to their abominations, even of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Jebusites, the Ammonites, the Moabites, the Egyptians, and the Amorites, for they have taken of their daughters for themselves and for their sons. Listen carefully, so that the holy seed... Holy seed. That's not somebody ate an apple and picked out all the seeds and then had a priest, a Catholic priest, bless them. No. The holy seed, the children. For they have taken of their daughters for themselves and for the sons, so that the holy seed have mingled themselves with the people of those lands. Yea, the hand of the princes and rulers have been chief. In this trespass. And when I heard this thing, I rent my garment and my mantle and plucked off the hair off my head and of my beard and sat down, astonished. They were, he, he, read the rest of it. They were not pleased that this happened. The holy seed was polluted. All right, let's take a look at some other things. Uh, all right. Numbers 13.33. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. Deuteronomy 2.11. Which also were accounted giants as the Anakims, but the Moabites called them Emims. Anakims, what was uh, in uh, Darth Vader, uh, before he was called Darth Vader in uh, Star Wars, what was his name? Anakim? Anakin? The giants were called Anakims. Coincidence? I don't think so. Deuteronomy 2.20, that also was accounted a land of giants. Giants dwelt therein in old time, and the Ammonites called them Zamzumans. Joshua 12.4 And the coast of Og, king of Basham, which was of the remnant of the giants that dwelled at Ashtaroth. Ashtaroth was one of those false gods. They named a place after their false god. Which was of the remnant of the giants that dwelt at Ashtaroth and at Edrai. Joshua 13, 12. And the king of Og and Basham, which reigned in Ashtaroth and in Ur Edrai, who remained of the remnant of the giants, for these did Moses smite and cast them out. Uh, Joshua 15, 8. And the border went up by the valley of the son of Hinnom unto the south side of the Jebusite, the same as Jerusalem. And the border went up to the top of the mountains that lieth before the valley of Hinnom, westward, which is at the end of the valley of the giants, northward. The valley of Hinnom, uh, if memory serves me correctly, that was the place where they, they put the, um, the garbage dump, where they were always burning their trash. I think. I'm not 100% sure. 
Uh, let's see. Second Chronicles 28 verse three. And he burnt incense in the valley of the son of Hinnom and burnt his children in the fire. Can you imagine? We're not talking about a dead child here. We're talking about human sacrifice. Uh, matter of fact, let's uh, may as well read the whole thing, right? Ahaz was 20 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 16 years in Jerusalem. But he did not that which was right in the sight of the Lord, like David his father. For he walked in the ways of the kings of Israel. See, this guy was the king of Judah. Israel had a different king. And Ahab, if you've ever heard of Ahab and Jezebel, uh, they were among the most wicked, probably some of the most evil people on the face of the earth that ever lived. Uh, verse 2, For he walked in the ways of the kings of Israel, also made molten images for Balaam, false god. Moreover, he burnt incense in the valley of the son of Hinnom and burnt his children in the fire after the abominations of the heathen whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. He sacrificed also and burnt incense in the high places and on the hills and under every green tree. Wow. More bad stuff. You know, this is why the Lord commanded the Israelites to exterminate the Canaanites. Like 2 Chronicles 33, verse 6. And he caused his children to pass through the fire in the valley of the son of Hinnom. Also he observed times and used enchantments and used witchcraft and dealt with a familiar spirit, a devil, and with wizards. He wrought much evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. Sounds like our uh, Congress and President sees, doesn't it? Uh, Jeremiah 32, 35. And they built the high places of Baal, or Baal, which are on the valley of the son of Hinnom, to cause their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire, burning their children alive, to pass through the fire into Molech. Molech. Uh, you know what the star of Molech was? It was the six-pointed star. Uh, if you want to see a copy of the six-pointed star, look at the Israeli flag. Moloch, to cause their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire unto Moloch, which I commanded them not, neither came it into my mind that they should do this abomination to cause Judah to sin. Uh, let's take a look at Amos, the book of Amos, chapter 5, verse 26. Now, Amos is Old Testament, and it's talking to the Israelites, but ye have borne the tabernacle of your Moloch. Moloch, remember the guy, the, the demon devil god that wanted children burned alive in human sacrifice? And God's Amos the prophet is telling the children of Israel, the Israelites, but ye have borne the tabernacle of your Moloch and Chiun your images, the star, the star of your God, which ye made to yourselves, the six-pointed star God. Acts chapter 7, verse 43. Yea, ye took up the tabernacle of Moloch, and the star of your God, Rempham, figures which ye made, your, which ye made to worship them, and I will carry you away beyond Babylon. All right, let's take a look. 2 Samuel chapter 21. Uh, let's see. 18. 21, 18, 2 Samuel. And it came to pass after this that there was again a battle which the Philistines at Gob, then Sibichai the Hushethite slew Saf, which was of 
the sons of the giant. And there was again a battle at Gob with the Philistines where El Hanan, the son of Jaro, whatever, a Bethlehemite, remember Jesus was born in Bethlehem, remember, slew the brother of Goliath. Did you know Goliath had a brother? Slew the brother of Goliath, the Gittite, the staff of whose spear was like a weaver's beam. And there was yet a battle in Gath, where was a man of great stature, in other words, he was a giant, that had on every hand six fingers and on every foot six toes, four and twenty in number, and he also was born to the giant. And when he defied Israel, Jonathan, the son of Shimei, the brother of David, slew him. These four were born to the giant in Gath and fell by the hand of David and by the hand of his servants. Let's take a look at the book of Judges, chapter 10 and verse 6. And the children of Israel did evil. And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam and Ashtaroth and the gods of Syria and the gods of Zidon and the, Zidon and the gods of Moab and the gods of the children of Ammon and the gods of the Philistines and forsook the Lord and served him not. Now, if you remember in the book of Judges, you ever heard of Samson? Uh, he had a lot of problems with Phil, uh, the Philistines, and he killed a bunch of them. So that's who Samson was uh, fighting. Now, you know what's interesting? In 1 Samuel uh, chapter 13 and verse 19. Now there was no smith found throughout all the land of Israel. Now we're talking about a metal smith. You know, the, you've heard of the, if you've ever watched the uh, Western, you know, the blacksmith, he'd make horseshoes and, uh, you know, make knives and stuff. And that's why a lot of people were named Smith. It used to be a very common name in America. Now, uh, now the, the most common names are like Gonzalez and Gomez and, uh, you know, you, you get the idea. Uh, now there was no smith found throughout all the land of Israel, for the Philistines said, lest the Hebrews make them swords or spears. But all the Israelites went down to the Philistines to sharpen every man his share and his coulter and his axe and his mattock. So here it is, uh, the Philistines didn't want uh, gun, they wanted gun control. We don't want these guys making swords and spears. So, you know, and what's interesting is, uh, what I find interesting, Cain and his children were the first ones to work with iron. And when you mix iron with carbon, it becomes steel. Steel is like 10 times stronger than iron. So if you have a piece of steel that's uh, half the weight of a piece of iron, it's 20 times stronger, right? I think I'm, I think that's right. So, you know, steel is so much stronger than iron. And you make a sword of steel and it's it's going to be strong if it's, you know, fairly thick. But everybody's heard of the Japanese samurai swords, you would think. According to Japanese legend, the gods came down from the sky and taught the Japanese to take iron oxide sand from a certain beach in Japan, put it in a fire with uh, charcoal, and taught them how to make steel. I thought that was very, very interesting. Said the gods came down and taught them. Now, if you want to read Genesis chapter 4, uh, let's see. In verse 22, 
Now, this is the uh, descendants of Cain. Genesis 4.22, And Zillah, she also bare Tubal Cain, an instructor of every artificer in brass and iron. Artificer, art, A-R-T, in brass and iron. They had metallurgy back in Genesis chapter 4. Tubal Cain. Matter of fact, Tubal Cain is one of those uh, secret code words of the Masonic Lodge. An instructor of every artificer, artificer in brass and iron. They had metallurgy back in Genesis chapter 4. According to legend, uh, the fallen angels taught them how to do this. I don't know. I don't put a lot of stock in it. But, you know, you're talking about the children of Cain here. And the, uh, the Philistines, who were of the Canaanites, Cain, Canaan, the Philistines, they had iron weapons. It all kinds of ties in when you think about it. All right, let's go read a little bit about uh, Goliath. 1 Samuel chapter 17. Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle and were pitched together at Sokcha, which belongeth to Judah, and pitched between Sokcha and Azekah and whatever. Uh, some of these Old Testament names, forgive me. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elah and set the battle in array against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on a mountain on the one side, and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side, and there was a valley between them. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath, Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. Six cubits, a cubit was about 18 inches. This guy was at least 10 foot tall, twice the size of a normal person. That's a giant. And he had a helmet of brass upon his head and was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the, of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. That's, that's pretty heavy. Um, now, surely, hopefully, uh, you've read the story of David and Goliath. Well, this is, this is the story. You want to read about it? Go ahead. First Samuel chapter 17, you can read about it. Uh, and David puts a stone between his, uh, his forehead and cuts off his head. Praise the Lord. He didn't send, uh, the Lord didn't send evangelists to, to preach Jesus and God, uh, John 3, 16 to this guy. No, cut off his head. Well, let's see how much God loves the Canaanites. Ze Zechariah, Zechariah, Z-E-C, Z-E-C, as in Charlie, H-A-R-I-A-H. -A -A I always get Zechariah and Zephaniah mixed up. Zechariah 14.21, Yea, every pot in Jerusalem and in Judah shall be holiness unto the Lord of hosts, and all they that sacrifice shall come and take of them and seethe therein. And in that day there shall be no more the Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. All right, so what did we what have we learned so far? Uh, God wasn't happy with the children of, of Ham and Canaan that some of the some of these people had six fingers and six toes and that he is going to destroy them. And uh, when his kingdom comes, they're not going to be around. And that the six-pointed star, which is the star of their god, of Moloch, is that was their God. And like I say, if you want to know uh, where that star is, take a look at the Israeli flag. Now, 2 Samuel 21.20, I want to make this clear. And there was yet a battle in Gath where 
was a man of great stature that had on every hand six fingers and on every foot six toes, four and twenty in number, and he also was born to the giant. Do you know that today, today, there are people running around with six fingers and or six toes? Matter of fact, there is a name for this in a medical condition. Uh, it's called polydactyl, polydactyly, P-O-L-Y, which is a Greek suffix, that, uh, prefix that means many, uh, P-O-L-Y-D-A-C-T-Y-L-Y. So there's actually a name for that, right? Now, the, uh, there's people in India. There's people in South America, uh, specifically Brazil, families with this. And the, from what I understand, the Pueblo Indians of, I think they were in New Mexico, they built their homes in the side of a mountain rock. Do you know how much effort it would take to carve a home into a rock? I mean, just working with concrete's tough, but can you imagine a solid rock and you carve it out? I mean, you've got to have metal tools, strong metal tools. You're not going to use copper or brass. You're going to have to use steel to carve into stone, rock. I mean, you know, but they, uh, they were held, people with six fingers or toes were held in high esteem, according to archaeologists. And I put some links that in my description box that you could take a look at. But did you know there are famous people today who have six toes? Perhaps you've heard of some of these names. Marilyn Monroe. Look at her life. Does that surprise you? Drew Carey. Halle Berry. Oprah Winfrey. Uh, tennis star Maria Sharapova. Sharapova. Think about it, people. Why are these people the considered these actresses and actors? Uh, why are they considered the cream of the crop? Oprah Winfrey. Uh, she did a video that I have on my uh, Bright Eon account. She did an interview with, I think it was the BBC, the British Brainwashing Corporation. They're, uh, that's sort of like their PBS, where she did an interview where she, where she said that racists, they just have to die. Racists, they just have to die. I mean... Who do you think she's talking about? She's not talking about the black Hebrews. She's not talking about the black Panthers of the nation of Islam. No, she's talking about white people. And they just have to die. Yeah. So, I do not have that video on my YouTube channel. Because I don't know how long I'm going to have YouTube. I really don't. One of these days they're going to boot me off. So, what can I tell you? So there you go. Drew Carey, Halle Berry, Oprah Winfrey, uh, Marilyn Monroe, six toes. And not all the Canaanites were giants. Okay? Now, in Joshua chapter 9, if you want to read, you can. The Hivites, which were one of the Canaanite tribes, they uh, went to Joshua. Mo Joshua took over after Moses died when they crossed in the promised land. And they tricked them. 
uh, and they went into a, onto Joshua and the Israelites, and they said, oh, we're from a far country, and, and, and we know the Lord God's with you, and we want to make, uh, we want to make a, a league with you. We want, to be, we want to be partners with you. And they tricked them, and uh, the thing was uh, that Joshua did not inquire of the Lord before he made a promise to them not to do harm to them. So they made a, a, a promise with them, a covenant, a league, not to harm them, not knowing that they were of the Canaanites that God had commanded them to destroy. Now, obviously, if the Israelites were five foot and these guys were 12 foot, they just said, hey, wait a minute, you guys are giants. You guys are the Canaanites, the Philistines. But that didn't happen. They must have looked just like the Israelites. Otherwise, they would have picked up on that, and they wouldn't have done it. But their mistake was is they didn't ask the Lord, who are these people? Can we make a, a league with them? Can we make a promise to them not to injure them? They didn't do that. So they, uh, they left them alone, and they lived to them, lived with them, and they probably intermarried with them. I don't know. And that's the problem. So, not, but the thing is, a lot of the Israelites made uh, marriages with the Canaanites. So, where are the Canaanites to this day? They don't call themselves Canaanites anymore. Today, they call themselves Christians, Muslims, Jews, Hindus, I'm sure. Um, Buddhists, I don't know. I bet you India is full of them. So, all right, people. Um, I just thought I would throw this out. I gave you a lot of stuff. If you want to go into detail, you can look up all the scriptures, read the whole chapters. Better yet, read the chapter before and the one after to see that I'm not taking stuff out of context, which I always get accused of. Because, you know, that's a thing. The devil and his children that own the media, they know full well that we're a lazy bunch of people and, um, hey, look, the football game's on or, uh, you know, what's Kim Kardashian doing? Wow, she got a new dress that shows even more of her rear end than the other dress she had. I mean, you know, that's, that's really... That's what our people are today. So, all right. Well, remember, I'm on Brighteon, B-R-I-G-H-T-E-O-N dot com uh, under Christian Bible Studies. Look for me, because one day, one day, Tube is going to boot me off, and it will probably be sooner than later. And remember something. If Trump was one of us, and he's not, just look at all his uh, Wall Street appointments to high levels in government. But if he was one of us, he could instruct the FCC, the Federal Communications, Equi uh, uh, Federal Communications Commission, they could put out of existence all the, um, any media outlet that they want. I mean, let's face it, they could sue Tube, YouTube, they could sue uh, Fakebook, they could sue all those people and say, hey, we got free speech, you're not allowed to censor anybody. If, if you're a public service, you have to offer service to everybody. And of course, the uh, liberals, so-called, will say, well, that's, they're a private corporation. They're allowed to discriminate against whoever they want. Oh, really? Just like the Christian baker, they got sued by the sodomites because he wouldn't bake them a sodomite cake? Like that, you mean? Really? How about suing a fake book for a, million, a billion dollars for uh, every person they censored? How about that? You know, you see, that's the thing. Censorship only applies to Christians. It doesn't apply to them. So, yep, Trump could uh, 
put into motion all this stuff if he wanted. He appoints the head of the FCC that could go after every one of the media outlets. But the thing is, he's one of them. He's one of them, people. If you're, if you think Trump's going to make America great again, I, I suggest you uh, look to Jesus instead. So, all right. Well, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries, in John eight twelve. Jesus said, "I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life." All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world, and that's Jesus, who is the Christ. In his name, amen.